Hi, I'm Perry Aftab, and I'm an internet privacy and security lawyer and run Wired Safety. It's important that we protect ourselves when we're online. That means we need to protect our reputation. To do that, early warning systems are the best things that you can do. Go to Google and set a Google alert. Your name, your full name, your email address, your screen names, your cell number, your regular number, your address, anything someone could use to identify you. And anytime Google finds that or Bing finds it or Yahoo finds it, you're going to get an email. That allows you to act fast. That means you need to go to the site and ask it to come down. If you know who posted it, reach out to the person if you think they might actually be reasonable and take it down. If it's a threat of serious bodily harm, death to you or someone you know, the first thing you do after you notify the site is call law enforcement. Keep copies and records, print them out, save them electronically. If you don't know how to do it, ask your eight-year-old. Then once you find out what it is and you're acting quickly, make sure you report it. You might protect the other people who haven't yet found out about it. Reach out to your local attorney general in your state. If you're from Canada, the federal privacy commissioner, wherever you are, the data privacy commissioners from where you are. You have rights, but unless you're going to assert them, we won't be able to stop these kind of things. A lot of people talk about free speech, and they believe, erroneously, that free speech means anybody can say anything about you anytime they want. Actually, in the United States, the First Amendment, which covers our free speech, only protects what the government can do about what you're saying. It means a government can't make it illegal if you say something nasty about President Obama. It's to protect our political rights and our rights of expression that the First Amendment applies. But people are not free in what they say about each other. If there's defamation, a fault fact that they're talking about you might have STDs, you did something terrible, you're a criminal, you're a slut. Those things are not protected and although you may not be able to put them in jail, you can certainly recover lots of money. There are also other things that you can do. It may cross a line into actual harassment. If it's designed to hurt you, if it has the effect of hurting you, if it's designed to target you, if technology is being used as a weapon, you may have criminal law that can protect you. Because the First Amendment is not absolute. There are lots of things you can't do. It's pretty obvious. If you're in an airport getting ready to get on a plane, you can't talk about the fact that you put a bomb on it. Whereas that might have been protected if you were in some in cafeteria somewhere. It's not in an airport. So we need to recognize you can't hide behind that. We also need to not believe everything we see online. You have a website operator who's operating a site who thinks that he understands the law and he's making it up and he believes he's all powerful. All we need to do is pull that curtain aside and find out that there's a man, not Oz, directly behind all of this. So you have rights, you need to assert them, you need to know them. If you're finding something wrong, you need to report it. If you see something wrong about somebody else, you need to report that as well to protect others. The more we stand up to protect others, the better all of us will be. For more information, you can go to wiredsafety.org. We're the world's oldest and largest internet safety group. If kids are being targeted, you can go to stopcyberbullying.org, which is our cyberbullying website. For wherever you go, whatever you do, you need to act quickly, take decisive action, and protect yourself.